Well, me old mates, we're a nation of people that love to eat, but we got no time to cook. It doesn't seem to matter where we live these days, our lives are filled with endless work and appointments, meetings and hassles. The rush and hurry of life drives us mad. It's organised chaos. These seem to be the ingredients of today's life for so many of us. Excuse me, darling. Do you cook very much? Um, I cook fish fingers, I'm afraid. Fish fingers? That's all I do. That's all you do? <laughs> what, what's your, uh, your best time-saving trick that you have? Go to McDonald's and uh, whip it in and put it in. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Can you cook? Not really, no. That sounded like a harmony. That was, be <laughs> that was beautiful. Barry, me old mate. Hello, mate. Uh, you're the voice of Portobello Road. Um, you're a busy man. What's the yeah. score with food at home? Do you cook a lot? Don't get time. Don't get time. Too busy. Are you a man that can cook or is that...? No time, mate. So that's why I love buying these. Do you, do you cook very often? No, I don't have time. My mom was here. You know what? It's the same old story for everyone, but cooking shouldn't be about stitching yourself up and getting into loads of trouble. It should be about enjoying yourself and having a laugh. So the whole idea of this video is that we keep things simple, work on the old confidence, I don't know, do a little bit of shopping, and that, me old mates, is the essential guide to Bucket Tucker. Right, this is something I've always wanted to do, right? Quite excited, I feel like I'm on watchdog or something. Um, we've established that people basically think that pre-packed food is quicker, uh, more convenient, less hassle, right? Fair dues, you're welcome to that. I want to prove otherwise, yeah? So what we've got here is spaghetti bolognese, right? Which cooks in seven minutes in the microwave, 25 minutes in the bag. Very, very nice. Um, 25 minutes isn't very fast, is it? We'll beat that. That's £1.49, and I've budgeted this fantastic pasta dish, right? A quid, right? So, we've got some quite good quality pasta here. Right, so, this is spaghettini. It cooks in around seven minutes, right? So this goes in salted boiling water. So basically, just bend it around, get it in there. Go on, my son, get in there. Here we go. The fantastic thing about this pasta dish, right, is it's going to look lovely, it's going to be really good for you, very simple, and it's a classic sort of sicilian style -y sort of pasta. What we're going to do is I've got these lovely tomatoes that are in the supermarkets now. Right, that's a good thing about supermarkets, we're getting like nice plums, beef tomatoes, we're getting cherry tomatoes, nice cherry tomatoes as well. Get the yellow ones, sometimes you even get the tiger ones if you're lucky. So you need about a handful of tomatoes, yeah, whatever tomatoes you can get, whatever tastes best really. And what we do is we just get these and we cut them in half, yeah. Like these lovely small ones we leave whole, the slightly bigger ones we can quarter, yeah? And it just makes it all look nice and all makes sense, yeah? And we're not going to cook this at all. You can cook it and it'll be lovely, but there's no point because they're so good. You can go in half, half, half. What we want to do is make a nice little sauce. This is the sort of thing you really do get on holiday in Italy. So we just chuck this all in the bowl, yeah? And then what we want to do is get some olive oil and you want two good lugs of olive oil. And then you want to season it a little bit, so a nice pinch of salt, a little bit of pepper. And then what I'm going to do is I've got some garlic here, yeah? Peel the garlic. Now, because we're not cooking this, we want to get that really fresh garlic flavour, yeah? So we only need the smallest amount. Just use, a, say, like a peeler, or you can finely slice it. And you just want a couple of flecks in there, and like, just a couple of flecks. And they're so delicate and thin that they're not, they're not going to offend anyone, right? So we've got that. Just toss it over. And that's basically your sauce. Now, at the moment, that's quite individual and nice little chunks. What we can do to make it even juicier is like squeeze a couple, just the one or two, just squeeze it, and it goes into like a little pulp. And that just means you've got a nice little bit of sweetness and a kind of like homemade sauce starting to sort of make with the olive oil, right? That's basically it done. All right, I've got some basil, oregano, and green basil here. Just pick just a couple of leaves, only like, you know, just a little bit, and then you've got the nice green basil. Get those in there as well, nice little leaves. And then there's oregano as well, which is really nice. And even things like the stalk where you've picked it, you know, you could chuck the stalk away, a lot of people do. But the thing is, you get this stalk and then, like, just, just finely chop it. It's quite crunchy. So, again, it's like another texture in the, in the pasta. So that's good. It's better than throwing it away, isn't it? So, basically, there we go. And we just toss these over like that. Right, nice, fresh colours. Look at that. So that's it. Basically, sauce is done. Pasta's cooking. Let's have a little look. Let's see if we're there now. Yeah. Just try a little bit if you're worried. Just pull it off. Mmm, perfect. Over here, just give this a little drain. Lovely. In here, here we go. Right, so, here we go. Look at that. Right, this is cold and raw. That is steaming. All we do is pour that in there 
and the residual heat from the, the, you know, you can see it steaming, you just toss it over. Look at all those colours. That's like the most fantastic, simple pasta dish you've ever seen in your life. Just toss it over, get a pair of tongs. Where's my tongs? Get your plate. Nearly forgot. A bit more salt. Nice. Because those tomatoes do need salt. Right? Don't hang around now. Serve it up. Give it to people. Tell them to eat it now. Stop yapping and get the tucker down them. Nicest dish in the whole world. If you serve that up to your mates, mate, they'd be well chuffed. Right, so we've got the second recipe, which is going to be like a main course, yeah? And I'm doing this with salmon. Now, we've got a nice little salmon recipe here. It's 2 99 reduced from 3 99 Bargain. And that's a scallop of salmon with um, baby asparagus and cream herb sauce. Beautiful. Um, so we've got some uh, salmon, nice fillet there, uh, some zucchini, and I've got some um, fine asparagus. Right, we won't need all of these, about that much. It's cost me about £2.50. So it's 30p cheaper, it's 10 minutes quicker, and um, basically I've got these zucchini, and I'm just going to slice them up, sort of like thick beer mats, about that sort of thick. Yeah? So, these little ones you can get in all the supermarkets now, and these yellow ones, well, they, they come every now and again when they're in season. Right, so I've got that. And then I've got some asparagus. I only need about half of these. And what you do is, if you get the asparagus and just, like, bend it, it clicks, right? And that bit's the lovely bit, and that'll be, your, you'll find that's a bit um, stringy. So, we do that with all of them. So we've got that. We'll just put a bit of seasoning on the old salmon, a little bit of olive oil, right? And we're going to grill it on a grill pan which I've got here, right? And these are great things, they're, they're about 20 quid, right? And it's really healthy for cooking because you don't need loads of oil or nothing like that. And you just get the salmon, put it on here. Lovely. Get the asparagus, put them along there. Just line it all up. And you just want to get that nice sort of charred bar mark. So maybe a little bit of salt over the courgettes. And then we just put that on. I reckon about two minutes on each side. So while that's happening, I'm going to make something with thyme from the garden. Um, and what I'm going to do is just grab it by the stalk, yeah? And just run your fingers down like this, yeah? And you get all those lovely tips. And um, what we're going to make is like a flavoured dressing, which is really, really nice with the fish. So I'm going to bash it up in the uh, pestle and mortar so it releases all those lovely oils and stuff. But you can chop this all up and just mix it together in a bowl. Put it in your pestle and mortar, pinch of salt, right? Just because it's a bit abrasive. Bash the hell out of this. Get it all nice and bruised. Done that. Get rid of that. And then you want to pour in some olive oil, about two tablespoons. All right. And you want half a lemon. Right, so there you go. Nice bit of lemon. So basically what we're making is a dressing. So just stir that up. Lovely. Right, so what I'm doing next, let's just check these. Yeah, that looks all right. So look, we're cooking it on a char grill, just like mess up the old asparagus, you can see how they got a bit charred up. Let's have a look at these old fillers, yeah, look at that, that's nice. And then let's have a look at the salmon. Lovely. Get it back on. I've got some rocket in the fridge. And um, I like rocket because it looks really good, and if you taste it, it's like really, really peppery, really, really good for you. And just, just a little bit more interesting than iceberg lettuce or something like that. So this should be ready pretty much soon. Sweet as. You don't have to cook the hell out of fish, do you know what I mean? It's uh, an old wives' tale. So just put all your veggies in here. Flip them over the side. Lovely. Let's get the old plate. All right, so we've got the salmon on the plate. So I'm going to get some of this, this dressing that we've got here and just put a little bit in and then just toss it all over. It's kind of like a warm salad, really. Just, just a lot more interesting. Once it's all coated, nice big pile of it. Beautiful. What I do now is just get a little bit of this dressing, put it over the salmon, 
and then serve it with half a lemon, in which time this is still cooking for another 10 minutes. <laughs> Right, so the third thing we're going to do is the dessert, and I'm going to do uh, a crumble, which like everyone knows. We've got this one here, which is a rhubarb crumble. Uh, it comes in at £1.49, so we've come just about on budget with that. We're a little bit cheaper, and we're using uh, blackberries and uh, Bramley's apple. Now, this takes about 45 to 50 minutes to cook. It's not really quick at all. I reckon mine's going to cook in about 15 to 20 minutes, so that's good. So what I do with these apples is just quarter it, right? And when they're quartered, just get rid of the, the core, just cut it out like that, really, really simple, right? Cut each quarter into like three or four, and then sort of like finely slice it like that. And the thing is, I've, the combination I've got is apple and blackberry. Pretty classic, can't go wrong, but we're going to have a little twist on it, yeah? Because I'm just going to push these apples in here, like that. Then I've got my blackberries. They taste absolutely sweet as and nice. Normally, you just put sugar on it, but I'm going to got a little twist to it. Balsamic vinegar, fantastic. You just do about two tablespoons, right? And you think it's a bit odd, but it's an amazing combination. And I'm going to use just a little bit of basil, right? Now, you could put basil or mint, right? Both taste really fantastic. And all of a sudden, you've made it a little bit interesting. So just chop that up and get it in here, right? And then we want to get some sugar in there, because you want to sweeten it. The apples are quite tart and the blackberries are quite sweet. I reckon about, and you do this to taste, you look at recipes and you think, oh, it's got to be exactly this, but common sense. I mean, a ripe apple to a, like, a tart apple is completely different. So I reckon about two tablespoons. So what we're going to do is we're just going to like turn it over and just get it all coated in sugar and the balsamic. Just mix it up. All right. So just leave that, OK? And then we're going to make the crumble. So for the crumble, crumbles are really, really simple. I'm going to use a quarter of a pack of butter. We all know what that looks like. So a quarter of a pack of butter. And then we want about three tablespoons of sugar, right? Sort of medium, not completely heaped, right? And then you want four heaped tablespoons of flour. And that'll give you fantastic crumble. So there we go. So then all you do is just get your fingertips in here and just like scrunch it all together. So just scrunch it, scrunch it, scrunch it. And that kind of does the trick. Now, you could do it in a food processor and just pulse it. But the thing is, nice thing when you do it by hand, you have like some really fine bits and some really chunky bits, which is kind of nice because you have like chewy and sort of crunchy. So it's, you know, it just makes it look and sort of feel a bit nicer when you eat it. And all we do now is just, we've got that in there and you can see this lovely sort of juice. And I'll just pour a bit out so you can see it. That, right? That's what we want to keep inside there. So when you pour this crumble topping on top of here, Right, it doesn't matter if it's a bit rough and ready and rustic because you want it to look homemade, right? Try and put it in the middle, right? And the good thing about that is because when it cooks, right, the top goes really sort of crunchy and chewy, and then on the outside, the juice kind of boils over. Now, that'll be enough for two, so I'm going to whack it in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes, about 220 in the middle of the oven, and the only time you know when it's cooked is when it's sort of all the juice is boiling around the outside, and the top is really nice and golden. So, there you go. Oh, no, I've got my old tray. Happy days. Lovely. Three minutes, and I've made my own crumble. Easy peasy. This one's going to cook for, like, 45 minutes, yeah? I like doing that. And, uh, like, just with regards to, like, it's not just one recipe. That is not one recipe. You can do all sorts. With regards to the crumble, yeah? Put a little bit of, like, ground almond in there and that really nutty flavour. Fantastic. Or you can go, like, rhubarb. Yeah, well, rhubarb's just good as rhubarb. Strawberries and a little bit of basil. Fantastic. Balsamic vinegar. Just strawberries on its own. Simple. Figs and honey. You can go absolutely anywhere. A combination of, like, all those lovely summer berries. It's fantastic. So there's a million things you can do. So, it's, you know, you're putting a little signature on it, do you know what I mean? It's sort of just making it... I don't know, it's just making it yours, so... What am I doing now? Nothing. Just chilling out. Easy. Superb. Have a look at that. Proper crumble. So there you go. That's the way it should look. Fantastic. Well, I like that. That was good. Just simple, easy, quick, homemade food. Just a little bit of thought, a little bit of fantasy. And, you know, that's what food's all about. Easy peasy. We've just seen that basically, with a little bit of common sense, a little bit of passion, 
we can make really nice, fresh, healthy food that's quick and damn tasty and better than norm, yeah? But what I'm gonna say now is like to really sort it out, to really be up there, cook some fantastic things. Because we all like to eat food, we all like to sit around the table and have a nice little tuck out, but the best thing in the world, for me anyway, is to be able to cook something simply, quickly, and have people go, yeah, nice one, Joe, that tastes like fantastic, that's brilliant, I've been talking to your mates about it, that's what cooking's about, that's the enjoyment. But one thing that really helps in cooking in every single way is like a definitive box of tricks, yeah? Your little goodies, your sort of ultimate larder store. So we've got things like balsamic vinegar, olive oils, all of a sudden your, your salad and your sauces taste really good. You've got things like gherkins, pickled onions, you've got cocoa, you've got capers, soy sauce. All of a sudden you start doing a little bit of Thai or Chinese sort of fusion food, fantastic. Olives, brilliant. And then we've got all these spices. I mean, like this is the best thing in the world. Spices are genius, they don't go off. None of these go off. You know, pestle and mortar, you make up the combinations of spicy, you know, just just brush fish with a couple of spices and bacon, fantastic. We've got vinegar, to tin tomatoes, tin chickpeas. We've got these porcini mushrooms. They're about three, four quid. But like, you use the smallest amount, put it in with some cheap old mushrooms, and all of a sudden they taste amazing. Everyone has pasta, peppercorns, mold and sea salt. Superb. Couscous, all of a sudden you're in Morocco. More spices, mustards, anchovies. You know, taste horrible on their own. Put them with things like roast lamb or like drape them over some fish. Bake them, happy days, things taste really good. So right, we've got all these things, and you know, 30, 40 quid shop, we should all have them, not double up and have a bit of this and a bit of that, get them all, and we sit there, whether we're a student, or we live in the Buckingham Palace or whatever, we've got them all in the bag, right? So, the idea is that we use this as like a little kind of like first aid box to get us out of any trouble, right? And I'm gonna go and see three sets of people, one of which are my best mates, um, who are at university in Coventry, and they're always phoning up, asking for blooming recipes and cooking all sorts of dodgy, smelly sort of uh, stuff that they've either gone and poached or, or got cheap. So we're going to go and see what they're going to do and check them out, mate. So here we go. You've been one of my oldest mates forever. Yeah. All right, you're always on the phone to me, asking for help on recipes and stuff like that. What was the last one you phoned me up about? It was a pheasant. No, or... no, it must have been. It was when I got that. I went to the market and I went and got that pigeon, and I wanted <laughs> how to cook it. You said it's a little bit high. Yeah, I know, and I didn't know how to chop <laughs> it up and what to cook it with. I cooked it with peas in the end, didn't I? Yeah. So what's um what's the setup here then? Well, there's six of us living here, and uh, we all tend to buy our own food and stuff like that. How much money do you spend on dinner, for instance? Well. Personally, me, I suppose it's about, uh, it's about five, I suppose, five a day, yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. So what's the shopping like around here? Well, this, it's not so bad, but there's a really good place. Coventry Market's really good. Coventry Market? Yeah, the local place, it's good. And also, there's a butcher there, and he sorts you out with sort of the, the decent cuts. He sort of uh, give you a bit of a discount if you tell him you're a student and stuff, especially yeah, yeah. the end of the week, like yeah. today being sort of the end of the week, we probably get a good deal. Right, OK. So like, can you sort out a whip then? How many of us? There'd be about six plus one other or something. Right, so if you go around with, with a hammer. Yeah, a hammer. Give me some money. <laughs> give me a fiver. If you try and squeeze a fiver out of them. Yeah. So what have we got, about 30, 35 yeah. quid? All right, yeah. So you want 30, 35 quid then? Well, that's fiver each. Yeah. Cool, bro. Yeah, we're trying to impress my friends, shall we? Yeah, sweet. <laughs> Right guys, so we're doing pretty well. I've got me old pork skin and me old pork leg, huge bit of meat. Right, we've done fantastically well with the budget because we had 35 quid and we spent 16 quid on that, 380 on the veg 
and uh, we've got some dessert ingredients. And basically, we've got 10 quid change. Cheers. Right, so first things first, I've got the old um, butcher to take the skin off the pork. And uh, all we want to do with this, and this will give you the best pork scratchings in the world, right, is basically just score it right down like that. You can make it as thick or as thin as you like, right down. And normal pork scratchings are just salt and the fat, and that's it. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the same rub, dry rub, that we're going to use for the pork leg. So we'll give it some nice flavour as well. So cut through here. You need a nice sharp knife or, or, or a clean Stanley knife. That's what they use in Italy. Ah, lovely. Basically, it's like a concertina, do you know what I mean? So you've got that. What I'm going to do now is make this sort of dry rub for both, yeah? I just want to have a little pinch of fennel seeds, because that's tasty. Some coriander seeds, very tasty, quite fragrant. And a nice pinch of chilli. I'll tell you what, I need a little bit of... Jim, have you got any... Um, in that box of tricks, you've got some mould and sea salt, not this powdered retro malarkey. Yeah, hang on. You have a little ferret about? All right. Just bash this up. Hey, John. Sweet. Could, it, could you find it any harder? Yeah. Nice one. So just put a bit of salt in. Nice pinch, because it looks like nice and abrasive. And also, the salt helps to bash up the spices. So... So what we've got, like... Now we've got like a powder, yeah? Right, which is a little bit spicy, a little bit fragrant and nice. So what we do is get our pork skin back. On both sides you want to do this, right? And just uh, sprinkle it on top and bottom. It'll be nice flavour. Turn it over. And that'll taste absolutely fantastic. So put it on like a... If you haven't got an iron uh, wire rack like Jimmy hasn't, just get one of the um, oven trays, yeah? and put the pork on here, try and space out the little bits, right? And just, we'll put it in the oven and we'll put a little tray underneath it to catch all the fat. So we got that, so very important, nice bit of salt on top, because the thing is, the reason we're doing the pork scratchings, apart from being nice, is that like we're having with drinks before we have the tucker, so that'll be cool. So you want that salty thing's quite cool. So a little bit of that, and a little bit of oil just to get the fat going. And then happy days, mate. So I'll, I'll get rid of these, put these in the oven. Drain them. Bottom. Right, you crisp up, you little boys. So what we're going to do now is the old pork leg. And this is fantastic. I mean, this is going to feed like 20 people. Right, so it's brilliant. We've got like, say, eight or nine people coming around tonight. We've got sarnies for two days, mate. So, you know, it's going to be really cost effective. So it didn't take the bone out for us but you probably would want to get your uh, butcher to take it out for you. Right, so we just cut along near where the bone is, right, and just open it out, and then on the other side. You definitely want the butcher to do this for you because it's a bit of a pain. But um, being a chef and Jimmy being a zoologist, it's nice to have a little dissect. So, down there. Jim, where are your dogs gone? Give a dog a bone. This is like Captain Caveman style. <sighs> Look at the size of that. <laughs> right, like what I've done now is by taking the bone out and opening it out like that, instead of it taking six hours to cook, yeah, like a big ham, it means it's going to take about two hours less. So what I want to do is just sort of like make the flavour a bit more tasty. Um, and I'm kind of hacking into it quite viciously. And I'll turn it around and I'll just like score the, the flesh like that, right? Just to sort of open it up a bit. That's fantastic because what with it being a leg anyway, it's got lots of sinews and stuff. So when it cooks, like those sinews will melt and sort of naturally baste the meat. So the meat will end up being like really, really succulent and juicy. And what I'm gonna do is again, pretty much the same as I did before. This time we're not gonna use chili, but the same sort of vibe. Fennel, coriander seeds, a good pinch of salt, right? Right, so pepper, right, nice and freshly ground black pepper, right, got this lovely salty sort of mix, and that'll just go in all like that. 
Right, this is going to make it taste really, really fantastic. Right, and then on the other side as well. Right, that's beautiful. Just need to get it in here. Just drop it in there like that. Right, and then what we want to do is just encourage some more flavours. So, like I'll get a whole bulb of garlic and literally just break off the cloves like that. Leave the paper on. And the thing is, when that roasts, yeah, all the garlic inside, instead of being like really harsh and garlicky, it'll go really sweet and nice. So when you get your plate of meat, a little bit of mashed potato, a bit of gravy, you just get like the paper thing, squeeze it, <laughs> mix it up with your gravy, it tastes beautiful. So that's that. And a little bit of olive oil. And what I want to do now is just raid Jimmy's uh, herb garden, get some good flavours. All right, so what you got then, Jim? I think it's a surprise, you jump. Sweet, mate. You've got golden marjoram. No yeah. one grows this. This is fantastic. Um, Golden marjoram is like, um, you can get it anywhere in seed, but no one grows it and it's brilliant, like ripped up in mozzarella, olive oil, a bit of lemon juice, sweet. What else you got? Sage? Sweet, you got, yeah, two different types of sage. You got the marbled one and the purple one, wicked. Can I have uh, a nice bunch of each? Right. Just for the pork. And what else you got? Nothing. Yeah. That's it, what else do you want? No, that's it, just um, rosemary. You must have rosemary. Uh, no, I haven't got rosemary. I know I can get some rosemary though. Yeah? I'll have to nip off and get it. OK, sweet. You all right to get that? Yeah, I'll sweet pop off and get that. This is brilliant, mate. I'm well impressed, I tell you. Well impressed. Nice. Right, yeah. Right, you go and get the rosemary, and I'll crack on. Sweet. Right, so we've got the old uh, sage, and we've got the pork. Right, so all we need to do now is just finish in touch. We've got the spice on it, which is going to make it really interesting in flavour. And the thing about fresh herbs is they do taste so much better. Like, the fact that Jimmy's grown, I think it's really impressive what he's done over there. The fact, because it's cheap as chips to plant some old seeds. Do you know what I mean? You just have a nice little bit of fish, rip up some marjoram over it, a little bit of thyme or something. You know, just simple cooking becomes really tasty. So all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just put a bit of olive oil in the pestle and mortar. And what I want to do is just bruise the sage, because inside all herbs there's like natural oils, yeah? And um, if you just put the herb on top, like nothing happens, you know, you don't get that transfer of flavour, yeah? So what you need is just, whether you rip it up, which is the easy way, or you just get a pestle and mortar. I don't want to bash the hell out of it, but just kind of do that. You can see I'm just sort of mushing it a bit. And, um, Jim, have you got that rosemary on, mate? Yeah. Sweet, bro. Nice. Beautiful stuff. Nice one. So even if you just do that, like, your hand, the hand feels a bit greasy, eh? It smells fantastic. So what I want to do is just, like, I'm not bashing it, I'm just bruising it a bit. And then take it out and see that lovely oil coming out. Just rub all that over the old meat. And happy days, mate. We're going to whack this in the oven for about four hours, I reckon. And just, you know, get on with your day, have a laugh. And at the end of it, you've got a nice bit of tucker. So there you go. Let's pop it in the oven. Oh, ho, ho. Sweet, they're just about done, actually. <sighs> nice. We're going to do the old dessert now. And uh, the good thing about this dessert is it's like kind of, kind of it's called semi-fredo, which is like an Italian thing. And it's a little bit like a, you are right, Jim? <laughs> It's a little bit like ice cream. But the thing about ice cream is there's all these recipes for ice cream in cookbooks and you can't really do ice cream successfully at home because you have to keep stirring it all the time and then it doesn't get cold enough quicker. So, semi fredo geezer. What I have to do is just um, separate four eggs, yeah? So we need the, the yolks in one and the whites in this one. So let's put the, the whites in there. And we need... You all right there, Jim? Yeah, fine. What do you feel like doing? A bit of whipping or a bit of bashing? I'll have a bit of whipping. All right, mate. <laughs> it's really quick if you've got some help. So I think we should probably get your... Is Raph about? Yeah, I'll get uh, Emily as well. Raph, Emily! That's it, just get rid of the eggs. Put them in there. Sweet. You all right to do a bit of whipping, yeah. old mate? Cheers. Give it some right good going over. I've got the yolks here, which I'm going to put together with one tablespoon of sugar. Right, I'll whisk those up. I've got a pint of double cream. Right, so it's quite easy to remember. Pint, four eggs, tablespoon of sugar, right? And, Jim, you can whip that. And as far as this recipe is concerned, we've got the egg yolks and sugar, right? We've got the egg whites and we've got the cream. 
And that's the equivalent of like a vanilla ice cream, yeah? But we can flavour it absolutely any way you like. So we've got sort of a pack of Maltesers here, which is like dead tacky but dead tasty. I've got the meringue, yeah? And that, that was bought from the bakery, and they're all the broken ones, so it cost us like nothing, right? And I've got some raspberries, which are really, really tasty. So, Jim, if you go and sit down there, Ems, if you um, give this a good hide, are you, can you give it a good hiding for us? Just, just hold the old bag. Give it a good bashing. Okay. Just don't bash your hand. All right? And I'll whisk up this. This has got to be like the, the quickest dessert in the world if you've got three friends. That's brilliant. That's perfect. That's enough. Yeah. Just pop that bag. Yeah, and do that to that. How are we doing, boys? You getting there? Sweet. That's it, over here, mate. Yep. So. So, we've got some toasted almonds here, which we just kind of scrunch in here. All right, we've got some raspberries. We've got the sort of slightly overripe ones out. All right, we've got the egg yolks. How's that egg white going, Raffaele? It's going up. Come on, my man. Yeah, it's good. The thing is, you always know when egg whites are done when you put them above your head and they don't fall down. <laughs> Easy now. Right. So, meringue. It's like a cocktail, really. You can just do what you like. And we've got plenty here. All we do now is just mix it all up. Right? And it's the, it's the, the air that you've now whipped into the egg whites and the cream that are going to give it that lovely sort of airy sort of smooth feeling like ice cream so look at that and then all you do now is whack this in the freezer for about i don't know hour and a half two hours and that'll be semi-frozen and that's what semi-fredo means get the old old teasers in here in we go as far as like like being like a chef's concerned this is the most tacky thing i've ever made but the thing is everyone always likes it so you know that's what home food's about really so, we're done. Whack it in here. Get it all out. And then just whack it in the freezer. About two hours. Happy days, mate. Nice one, guys. Good wrist work. Hey, big boy. Raffaele. Cheers. Jim Bob. Right, so basically, pork's been in for about three, three and a half hours, and um, I'm just going to do the veggies now and get it all done. Really simple stuff, sort of quite homely and hearty. So we've got potatoes for mash that the boys are doing. Um, and then while they're boiling, we're going to steam um, some nice runner beans. So just slice the old runner beans up diagonally like that. Whack them in here, and that's it. So um, while these potatoes and beans are cooking, next door we just have a really basic tomato sauce, which is a um, hot pan, olive oil, sliced up garlic, toma tin tomatoes, right, salt and pepper cook it down slowly. By the time these are cooked, you just throw these into the tomatoes, mix it all up. And that combination of sort of like garlicky tomatoes and the green beans is just fantastic. How are we doing there? That's all right. Yeah, too bad. Can you, uh, just whack those cut potatoes in there? Yeah. Right, so basically, what we do now is just like put some nice salt in this water so it's nice and salty. Um, get these on the boil. They'll take about 15, 20 minutes. Um, steam this on top. So um, hopefully, you all approve and uh, whack it all out on the table and tuck in. Okay, so basically all I have to do, just salt the water a little bit so it tastes nice. And um, I'm gonna cook these potatoes in salted boiling water. I'm gonna put the runner beans on top, a bit of uh, tin foil on top of that. And that'll be sweet as. So that can do that. So what I need to do now is make a little uh, sauce for the runner beans. And I think it's just quite interesting, like, because runner beans are normally just, just cooked with a little bit of butter, which is lovely. But just to make them a little bit different, tin tomatoes, cheap as old chips. I mean, tin tomatoes are all right, actually, because at least you know then the tomatoes are picked when they're ripe, as opposed to buying rubbishy ones in the winter. Do you know what I mean? All I need is a little bit of um, chopped garlic. So just take the old skin off and finely chop it, really. And uh, that pan will be getting pretty warm now. Right. So just finally slice up. Cut it up any way you like. This pan should be pretty hot now. 
Just put a little bit of olive oil in. Get your old garlic. Lovely. Right, you just want to soften those up a little bit and then uh, add the tomatoes. Bring it to the boil. Give it a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Right, shake around. So these two are going to cook for about 20 minutes each and they'll be choice, mate. Nice one. Going to have a beer now. Right. Lovely, that's doing all right. Let's have a look here then. Ah! Oh. Right, okay. Hmm. Right, that's done. I need a cloth because that's hot. All we do is got really nice tomato sauce here. All right, runner beans in here. All right. Let's test the old spuds. Yeah, they're sweet. So these have only had about like 17 minutes. But they cook as quick as you want to cut them up, really. If you have them big, then they cook a lot, they, you know, they obviously take a long time to cook. If you cut them up smaller, then, you know, it's good. So I need some spoons. Let's grab those. All right, and I just need to sort of toss these beans in those lovely tomato sauce. And I'll tell you what, it is a fantastic thing to do because it just makes it from being really boring to uh, quite interesting. All right, let's just taste that for seasoning. Um, mm, that's fine. Right, potatoes. In here, masher. Mash them as normal. I think the, um, the key with mashed potatoes is just sort of get them cooked perfectly, mash them up and then just salt and pepper and maybe a bit of nutmeg to taste. Um, nice to have a little bit of the elbow grease over there again. Right, you just want to season that, nice little bit of pepper. Right, want a nice knob of butter. About that much. Put that in there. Mix it up and I've got some cream. Just a little bit of cream. Just makes it like really nice and creamy. The pork will be ready, because I checked that about five minutes ago. So just mix this up. Get that in there. Let's have a little taste. Touch more salt. And we're there, mate. Sweet. Right, ready to rock and roll. Let's turn that oven off. That's it, lovely. Party time. Hi, yeah. You're right. Okay. How's it going, Jimmy? All right, not too bad, mate. Catch that food. Jimmy boy, we've had a good day, haven't we? You know, we've done a bit of shopping. We've had a nice bit of pork for dinner. We've tucked out. We've got loads of leftover ham and food for tomorrow. Yeah, she's excellent, yeah. We've done two free extra people, and we're 10 quid up in budget. Not quite, mate. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Students, mate. Yeah, mate. Get this down, yeah? Cheers, boy. Thank you very much. 
I don't want you to give me any grief tonight because I've got a busy day tomorrow. I'm going up to Manchester to see some firemen. Oh, so. Try and sort them out, mate. Nice one. Cheers, boy. All right, to frank me, old mate. We've got, um, you know, we're here at the station, and you're one, you're the oldest serving member of staff. Oldest serving, yeah. How Twenty-seven long? years. Twenty-seven years, mate. Super. Chief of retirement, sir. But also, you are the main man in the kitchen, aren't you? That's correct. Cool, mate. I do all the cooking. What's the score here? I mean, what's the coup? You've got how many people on the watch? We've got six people on the watch, so usually cooking for five or six at a time. What's, the, what's your kind of mental brief when you think to yourself, right, I'm going to cook a bit of tucker? Um, is it, like, obviously time-based? Something that's got to be reasonably quick? You don't want to be cooking all the time. don't want to be cooking all the time, but with the same real want to eat it quick because the eye gets turned out, you see. Might go to a fire, so need to cook something quick that can be eaten quick. Well, listen, I've got a couple of ideas, yeah, for, um, for some things that you can knock up really quickly. You know, simply cooked, don't mind hanging around, and also don't mind being heated up a bit. Um, but I do need to go to a butcher's and get a nice bit of meat. Yeah. So, um, We've got a local lad down the road, it's very good food. Super. Been there a few times. Well, if, you, if you're happy, let's go shopping, you know what I mean? Where are we going? Right, nice one. So this is Frank's kitchen, bit posh, I think, mate. Got all the toys in the world. Got the hole in the wall here, feel like a real canteen boy. And that's where they eat dinner. So, first things first, I want to get, like, dessert in the bag, yeah? So, what can I do for, like, six strapping lads? Well, I reckon it's got to be, like, sticky chocolate sponge pudding, yeah? Good thing about that is if you have leftovers, or you even have to leave it in the microwave, reheat it, it's fantastic. Put it in the fridge the next day, reheat it again. Just doesn't get dry and horrible, yeah? So, first things first, let's get our ingredients out. So, I, the reason I like this recipe is it's because it's quite easy to remember. Um, so, let's just get some bits and pieces out. Right, got some scales. Oh dear. Don't use scales very much, as you know, but like, when it comes to things like desserts, it's quite important a lot of the time. You've got to get it on the ball, because it's a bit like chemistry, do you know what I mean? So, I need uh, 200 grams of butter, right, which should be about that much, so have a little guess. Oh, straight on the head, mate. Beautiful. And then I need, where's my caster sugar? 200 grams of caster sugar. Right, so that's easy to remember. Right. Whack it in my old bowl. Butter goes in. You want it reasonably soft because you need to cream it. Right. Pour in the sugar. And just use it like a spatula to kind of sort of stab it and get it so it's mixed up. And then you can start really whisking it. And it's quite nice because you get air into it and it's, you know, a nice little bit of air that's going to make this rise a bit and go nice and sort of soft. Right, you can see it coming together. And as soon as it starts coming together, you can start really making it and go... You want to do it until it goes slightly pale. Right, and then you know you've done a good job. Lovely. Right, so that's that. Nice and creamy. Right, what I need to do now is I need self-raising flour. I'm going to need 200 grams of that as well. So let's get that in there. That's easy to remember. And I need a teaspoon of baking powder. And basically, the baking powder and the self-raising flour are mainly our sort of raising agents, yeah, that are going to lift and like when they start cooking and make it nice and light and soft. So I need a sieve. You don't have to use a sieve, but I like to because it makes it light. Just not the sieve. Quick time. Oh, lovely. All right, and I need three eggs. And I try and use nice free-range ones, because they always taste a bit better. Just get all that together. It takes two seconds. You just want to mix it up until it goes like a kind of doughy sort of cake mixture. But you don't have to mix it too much. Right, so that's that done. And then I want to flavour it. What you got, you can put some vanilla in here now, and you've got like, a vanilla sponge, put it with some nice warm jam, superb, yeah? But what I want to do is make it chocolate, yeah? So, just 
get some sort of hot water. Where's my cocoa? I need about three sort of heaped tablespoons of cocoa powder, yeah? So there we go, in there. Uh, and just enough water to sort of make it into a nice sort of paste. So let's have a little mix up here. If you don't use warm water, you'll find that like, the, the cocoa powder goes kind of dry. So you want to put just enough water so that your three tablespoons of cocoa powder sort of dissolve and go smooth, yeah? So, in there. Get all of that in there. Right, and then just mix it up. So basically that's your cake mixture, yeah? Chocolate cake mixture, really, really nice. But the thing is, I can leave it like that, absolutely fine. I want to make it a little bit more interesting. So I've got some almonds. So I'm just going to put like a handful of flaked almonds, or you could use whole almonds, just bash them up a bit. And um, see, I've got some chocolate, just about 100 grams worth, but you can put anything you like. Just bash the hell out of this. Right. And what happens is when you put the chocolate in like this, in the middle of the cake as it's cooking, you get this like really fantastic sort of soft sea of like chocolate melting. Stir it up and we're done, mate. So all I do now is just get a little bit of butter from the paper and just rub it around the sides just so it doesn't stick and just get it all in there, mate. Right, so all you have to do now is just push it out flat so it's all equal because you want it to cook all at the same time. So, what this in the oven for about 18 to 20 minutes at about 180. Yeah. Right, the pudding's in, so I'm going to make a chocolate sauce because that just makes it really, really tasty. So I've got a pan of simmering water on, yeah? All I need is this pack of chocolate, 100 grams, and just want to sort of bake it up. And then I need 100 grams of icing sugar. Sweet. Whack that in there as well. And I need 100 grams of butter. I guess it's about that much, but I might be losing it. Yeah. So that goes in. We need four tablespoons of milk, which I normally guess, but to be good, that's two. <laughs> Three, four. Whack that on here for about one minute. Yeah? And it will start melting slowly, then take it off and just stir it every now and again and it will melt. If you keep heating it too much, then it will split, right? It's not hard, but basically just keep stirring it, it'll be beautiful. So let's let all that cook and melt and all that sort of thing and come back to it when it's cooked. Right, let's check the old babe. Superb. Look at that. So I've got the old chocolate sauce and uh, just have a look at that. I mean, that is just, that's just heaven, mate. So basically all we do now is, while this is hot, just pour the chocolate on top. Superb. Right, there you go, mate. One dessert in the bag. That is just beautiful. Right, so all we do is just, we can serve that on the table, spoon it out, a little bit of ice cream, custard, bit of cream. They'll love it, mate. So all I've got to do now is just uh, get on with a little bit of veg, get the old steaks going. Happy days. Right, so I've sorted uh, Frank out of the old box of tricks, but he doesn't know it yet. So listen, got some nice veg, yeah? And the whole idea of this is I want some really, really special, tasty veg that kind of are quite good to be reheated and stuff like that. So first of all, I've got some really nice filled mushrooms. Cheap as old chips, yeah, so they're like that. And I've got some potatoes and some celeriac, some thyme and garlic. So what I need is a uh, board, knife. So basically, I've got the potatoes. I just need about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of us. I have about five potatoes. Yeah. All right, and I just need to peel that. Where's the old peeler? Lovely. So what I want to do is I'm doing a gratin, yeah? And gratins are fantastic because basically it's based around salt, pepper, garlic, cheese and cream, right? And from that, you can do absolutely anything you like. I'm doing celeriac and potato, all right? And celeriac is this little fella here, right? Handsome little boy. Yeah, very nice. But say you wanted to, you only had leeks kicking about, yeah? Get some nice leeks um, and put that in the gratin, that's really nice. Some onions and potatoes, really, really good. Mushrooms are fantastic. So just play it by ear, see what's good. Right, so now I've just peeled these. Get rid of the old peel. 
Lovely. So I just want to slice these up. Like about that. Yeah? So that will cook quite quickly in about half an hour, 40 minutes. Right? So every time it gets quite hard to slice, just slice it onto a flat edge. There we go. And what I've got is, um, I've got some nice baking dishes here. And these are really handy. It just like, you know, you just whack them in the oven. They just seem to cook them really nice. So I'm just going to whack it in there. And it's kind of a bit of a kind of bosh kind of dish, because you can just sort of bosh everything in there, mix it all up, and it always seems to work. So take the top of the celeriac, the bottom of the celeriac, and then you just want to peel it with a knife so the skin comes off. You can use a peeler, but to be honest, the skin's a bit thick, so it's a bit of a palaver. So, wicked. Get rid of that. Right, what I want to do is just half it, quarter it, and just like the potatoes, slice them nice and thinly. So basically the same sort of thickness, and they'll cook in the same sort of time. All right? Get this in there. And then we've got thyme. This is like an optional extra, just for a little bit of flavour. Just rip up the old uh, couple of sprigs of that. And then you want a little bit of garlic. Clove will do. Just want to peel that. Get rid of the old skin. And then just finely chop that any way you like. You can use one of those mashes if you want in this one. Get that in there. And then we're talking about a little bit of pepper. All right, nice bit of pepper. Mold and sea salt, Essex. Good pinch of that. All right, we've got a pint of double cream. Now, there's no saying how much cream you need, but if you pack the veg tightly into a dish, you want to kind of put enough cream to half fill the dish. Right, and that just happens to be a pint in this case, which is for like eight people, so that's good. Right, and then I've got some Parmesan cheese. Now, you can use a good cheddar cheese. It's fantastic with this. So, just grate a whole load of that. Lovely. Right, you want a couple of handfuls. To be honest with you, it's also personal taste. I like it quite cheesy, so I'll put quite a bit in. And once you've done that, just kind of scrunch it up so every little bit of celeriac and potato gets coated in all that lovely garlicky, thymey malarkey. Right? And then you want to push it out flat, like that. All I want to do then is just grate a bit of cheese over the top and bake the old fella. And that'll taste fan dabby doozy. So whack that in the oven. In this case, it says Gas Mark 5, about 200, right? Just under 200, so that's perfect. About 40 minutes, half an hour. Just test them when they're soft. Now, I've got some really nice flat-filled mushrooms here. So, what I'm going to do for this is you can just cook them with a bit of salt and pepper and oil and they're fine, but like, mushrooms are like sponges, do you know what I mean? Every time you cook them, they go... <laughs> so you've got to make... I'm going to make a lot of flavoured oil, yeah? So, I need one clove of garlic. Again, I'll just take the old skin off. And I'm just going to whack it in the old pestle and mortar. In actual fact, I'm going to give this to Frank. He doesn't know it yet. But um, I think, like, you know, he's obviously a really good cook in that. But I think if I gave him one of these, you can then sort of get spices and herbs into the cooking. Stop the old boys getting a little bit bored with the same old flavours, you know? So, a little pinch of chilli, just a little one. Again, that's the taste. And I know some of the boys in his brigade like a little bit of chilli. And then the old thyme comes out again. I think thyme and mushrooms go together really well because they're quite, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know, quite earthy, really. But, you know. Right, a pinch of salt. And you just want to kind of bash that. Right, so when you scrunched it all up, all those lovely oils have come out of the time. Just put like four tablespoons of oil in, a couple of lugs, right? And you want to kind of swill it all around. And all of a sudden, you've got this most fantastic oil. And like, if you made some bread, right, and put that over it, it'd be fantastic. If you bought some cheap old bread and rubbed that on top of it, it would make it even more lively and tasty than it would be. And then all I do, right, just kind of dribble in and around these mushrooms, right? Try not, don't waste any, all right? And that will just make them taste fantastic. And then last but not least, a little bit of uh, butter, because um, the whole butter and flavoured oil thing is really, really good, especially with mushrooms, yeah? And then you bake these for about 20 minutes, and they go really, like, like that filled mushrooms go really kind of meaty, you know? So, pucker mushrooms, I'm probably going to just whap it in the oven for about 20 minutes, about 200 degrees, and, um, fantastic. Right, here we go. We're getting to that time of day where we have to have some serious tucker now. I've got the steaks from the butchers, nice bit of meat, actually, and, uh, in a red board. Here we go. So, listen, 
To be honest, most people when they cook steaks just cook them as they are with a bit of salt and pepper. But why have it just all right when it can be really, really tasty? Right, so what I want to do is make like, like a kind of rub stroke marinade here, yeah, which is basically something I can knock up, just rub on this meat to liven up the flavour a bit. So, a little bit of thyme, right? Just get it in there. And then I've got cumin here. I'll tell you what's good about the old cumin is that they, they obviously use it a lot in curries and stuff like that. But if you put a little pinch, and I mean a little pinch, yeah, just like that, and that little pinch just makes it really nice and meaty and tasty. And then I've got oregano here. We normally see it in like powdered form, but I just got some that's loose, right? A couple of cloves of garlic. Tell you what you can do, just leave the skin on, yeah? And we're just gonna bruise it out, right? Because it's not gonna stick to the steak, yeah? It'll fall off. But essentially, you want that flavor in there, okay? And a little bit of salt, okay? So just basically, I mean, look at those colors, fantastic. And it just smells really, really tasty, all right? And then if I get a tray, now, the other thing I'm going to do, with these steaks, yeah, they cut quite thinly, but I just want to use the base of my palm here and just sort of give it a little bit of a bash, just to make it a bit bigger, as you can see. And what happens then is that it's bigger, it can take more of the flavour over here, and also they cook really quickly, yeah? So I just... Superb. Right, get this up here, all right? When you cook steaks, you always want a nice hot barbie, nice hot pan, nice hot griddle pan, yeah? So I'll get them onto, get them onto heat, and at the same time, I'm gonna uh, get a little bit of olive oil, just a couple of tablespoons. You don't want it to be floating in kind of oil, otherwise it's gonna be a pain to cook. But just again, like, move that all around, and you've got fantastic flavor. Now listen, lemons. Everyone always uses the juice of lemons, which are great for dressings and stuff. But if you get a peeler, and take the skin off, like this, right? The skin is so fragrant, it's unbelievable. Right, so just slice up the lemon zest, kind of hack it up any old how. Put that into your oil here. So what I want to do now is basically just rub these steaks. Nice bit of pepper, steaks like that, and just put that in the middle. Right, and remember, it looks like this is quite bitty, but this is only for flavour. And the thing is, when it cooks, it's all going to fall off anyway. But just rub that in. So we'll leave them for about five minutes while the pans are getting hot. And um, beautiful, mate. How do you want them cooked? Medium? Well? Right then, boys. Thanks for having us. It's been a real pleasure. Right, I got you a present, Frank. Oh, smashing! Thanks so, so much, Jamie. Bash up all those herbs and spices. Get a gentleman. Get some flavour in there. Superb. Listen, I've got to whiz back to London because I've got to cook for some uh, city boys tomorrow. But um, I need to ask you just one favour. What's that? Couldn't help it, mate. Oh, no. I want one. Right, 
to work with me, old mate. Yeah. How long have we been mates? Five, six, six, seven years, yeah. Pleasure, boy. Pleasure's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, mate, you've been a city boy for, what, 20 years? Ooh, yeah, yeah, about 20 years. I'm giving away your age now, aren't I? Well, you know, I started when I was seven. <laughs> no, I've been in it since a child, so child what's, soldier. What's the school with, like, you know, food? How does that fit into your life? Yeah, I, 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 I love cooking and I love, I love to try and get some time, to, maybe two times a week, twice a week, maybe get some time with my wife and, you know, to cook. So what's the school with budget, then? I don't think it's an issue with, with food. Um, you know, there's no upper and lower side. And you know, one night you may have something crazy like oysters, and another night you might have fish fingers. It, yeah. You know, it's, that's, that's not the issue. I, I think one thing I have learned though is you don't have to throw money at food, so have, have a good meal. So, like, what do you fancy then? What do you want me to do? Well, I was hoping to leave it up to you. It's a room you get paid for doing this. So. All right. So, how many are we dealing with? We're dealing with seven people. Beautiful. And does that include mm. me? Uh, well, just when you've done your job, we can come and join us. Make so it we're talking about eight people oh, yeah, then. Thanks, Wilco. Okay. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm glad I asked you, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should we go shopping then? I feel like going fish. I'd love some fish, yeah. There's a really good fun. fish shop down Goldbourne. Are you going to come with us? or? Yeah, I'd love to come. Can I get out of my suit? We're, we're yeah, you're going to look like a normal bloke. Yeah, look like a normal bloke. Scruffy boy like <laughs> me. Come on then. That'd be Sweet. great. Let's go. Have you seen this place? This is Wilco's gaff, right? So, like, very, very pucker. Nice surfaces. Look under here. Oi, oi! Very, very posh. And, uh, you know, everything's a bit, you know. Got the old box of tricks. I was going to give him one, but he's got, like, a cupboard of tricks instead of a box of tricks. He's even got the old wrapping paper downstairs, so... Beautiful, very nice. So, what I'm going to do, basically, is a nice kind of... It is classy, and people think it's a bit complicated, but I tell you, it's the easiest dessert you can even imagine, right? And it's... Um, I'm going to do, like, an apricot and pistachio tartare tan. So, classic French thing. But the nice thing is, is that, like, you learn it once, yeah? And you can do it with any fruit. You can do it with apricots, like we're doing, peaches, plums, pears, apples, even bananas, wicked. So, right, what I'm going to do... Because I've got my nice apricots and I've got some vanilla sugar and you don't have to do it with vanilla sugar, you can do it with just sort of normal caster sugar. But I need 200 grams of that, so let's turn on our little gadget thing here. It's all sci-fi here, mate, I tell you. Um, 200 grams of that. Come on, my son, get in there. Nice. So 200 grams of sugar and then I've got a plate here. I need to make some caramel, yeah? And people normally are a little bit scared of caramel. I think they think it's a bit chefy, do you know what I mean? So, I'll, I'll show you how hard it is. Basically, all you do is I need roughly half of this sugar, right? And I'm just guessing here, so it's about 100 grams, yeah? Yeah? Half that sugar, right? A little bit of water, so... Lovely. Whack it on the old gas. Right, so we get the old sugar on, yeah? and we just leave it, keep the old eye on it, yeah? And we're gonna make some caramel. What that means is when sugar and a little bit of water goes clear, dissolves, then goes slightly golden, and then goes kind of brown, nice brown, not black brown, yeah? Now, with the rest of this sugar, what I'm gonna do is I need about 11 apricots, yeah? But you can have as much fruit as you like, to be honest. And um, it's quite nice, it means that like this one recipe can be seasonal, so you can have it in the summer, make it a little bit lighter. You can have it in the winter, make it a little bit more frumpy and sort of like appley and stewy and stuff like that. So all I'm doing is just literally getting the fruit and halving it, taking out the pip. Simple as that, yeah? Half it, twist it, take out the stone. Easy, anyone can do that, okay? Once we've done this, right, with the other 100 grams of sugar, Right, just pour the sugar on and just toss it up, yeah? And what that will do is bring all the lovely sort of sweet moisture out of the fruit, yeah? And it will start to bleed and make you a lovely little sauce for free. All nice. So leave that. Right, show you a little trick. Let's get the old pestle and mortar. I'll show you something that's quite interesting, yeah? These stones here, right, normally you just chuck them away, yeah? Put them in the old pestle and mortar, crack it, right? Look what's inside. It looks like an almond kernel, yeah? And if you get it out and slice it up, right? Look at that, it's like a nut, yeah? Taste that, no one knows this, it's like a big secret. It tastes like amaretto, it's fantastic. So sprinkle that in there as well. So I'll just clear away. Get rid of all this. Fantastic, right, let's have a check the old caramel. Sweet, have a look at that, that's nice. That's getting really dark now. 
Right, so just give it a little stush about. Be very, very careful. Make sure there's no kiddies about. I need about 50 grams of butter, right? That's 250 grams. One, two, three, four, five. I have that much. Right? Just pop it in there and just let it melt. Give it a little jiggle. And basically, that's kind of like a little toffee. And uh, just whatever that comes into contact now, uh, any fruit, you just know it's going to taste nice. And just pour that into the bottom of the pan. Lovely. Right, so jiggle it about a bit. And then just get the fruit and just whop it in there. Nice. And just with your fingers, like, be careful not to touch the caramel. Just put the fruit all over the place. All right? And that's it done, basically. All we need to do now, chop up those sort of little bit of apricot stone kernels, really, any way you like. Scatter them in, because they're really actually very, very tasty. And then I've also got some thyme. Now, this is a bit odd, but the thing is, I like a bit of odd every now and again. And it's thyme flowers, and they're lovely. Just sprinkle the thyme there, just a little bit. I know you see thyme used on sort of like lamb chops and stuff like that, but, and it's, you know, it's quite a savoury thing. But it really does work with this. So, push that to one side. I'm just going to roll out a bit of puff pastry. Now, if I was in the restaurant, I would make my own puff pastry. Um, but as we're not, I don't bother, because to be honest with you, it is a bit of a palaver. So, where's, where's this rolling pin? Here we go. What I need to do is just roll this out, yeah? So get a bit of the old flour. Put the old thing on here. Just roll it out nice and easy. And I just want it to be a bit bigger than that, so I can sort of get it right on top. So just keep rolling out. And you want it to have it about, I don't know, half a centimetre thick. Because remember, it's puff pastry, so it's going to puff up big. Lovely. I think we're there now. Let's just get this, have a little check. Lovely. Right, just go about an inch bigger, like this. Right, save these little bits for a rainy day. And then you just want to use the tip of the knife. We call it docking it, just so it doesn't puff out out of control. Lovely. Just lay it over like that, and sort of tuck it in like it's going to bed, yeah? Right to the edge. Right, like that. Lovely. Right, and that's superb. Basically, that's it. Easy peasy, you can do it with anything. So I'm going to pop that in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes and uh, wait for it all to go nice and golden on top. The whole caramel's bubbling away like the clappers. And then you take it out, right, you can have it serve it straight away, leave it for a couple of hours, reheat it or have it cold, serve it with ice cream. Superb. Look at that. That is just absolutely fantastic. Right, I'm going to whack it on a white plate, yeah? So, just put a plate over it. Carefully, this is what I do anyway, turn it over like that. Give it a little shake. Cross your fingers, hope that it cooked nice. Beautiful. I'm going to use pistachios um, to sprinkle over this tart and it just seems to go really, really nicely with it. And then a little bit of the old thyme flowers, I think. Beautiful. Nice. All you need now is a big scoop of vanilla ice cream. Whack it in the middle of the table. Happy days, mate. Right, so we've got some fantastic fish from the old Joe the boy. I've been calling him Joe for two years and his name's George. Can't believe it. So listen, right, I'm going to make a really simple but classy sort of sea bass dish. And don't forget you can use any fish you like, to be honest, any nice white fish, cod, haddock, that sort of thing. So, first things first, is I want to kind of, instead of just cooking a bit of fish, which is lovely, and when you cook fish, it's nice to have like, the skin crispy and the inside sort of flesh nice and soft. Right, instead of just having that, I want to try and make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah? So all I do is just get the old fish fillet and kind of pinch it at either side. Yeah? And by pinching it, you kind of pert it up in the middle. Right? And then you just want to kind of just score it like that. And what it allows you then to do is get some seasoning and herbs right into there and also means that it gets cooked quicker, which is good, isn't it? And it's little things like that that just make sort of like fish a little bit more interesting than normal, you know? And you can do that with sort of, you know, any fish you like. So let's just do that to all of those. Okie dokie. Right, so what I want to do is, because I want to kind of get the fish in the fridge and just ready to cook, is I've got some nice herbs here. I've got some purple basils, got some green basil, Got a little bit of parsley, right? Anything like that, or one, one or the other. 
all right, just finely slice it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of stuff it into those slashes. So instead of it just cooking and being like nice, right, like you're actually infusing where you've scored these fish, right, you just get the herbs and you just poke it in like that. Look at that, fantastic. So when it cooks, you get all that fragrance cooking into the meat, right, so that's lovely. You just do it to all of them, really. But it's amazing, like the little things really count, do you know what I mean? A little bit of herb like that, it's just nice. And the last one. Lovely, so I'm just going to line these up. A little bit of olive oil. Just give them a right good drizzle. I'll put it on some parchment paper, all right, just to save on the old washing up. But um, also, a nice lug of olive oil. Right, just move them around on the tray so they don't stick. And look at that though, I mean like this, took, come on be serious, that is seriously nice, fresh, healthy, sort of summertime eating, you know. And uh, you know, so that's it, that's all I do to that. Just before I cook it, salt, pepper, happy days mate, whack it in the oven, right at the top, get it nice crispy on top, nice and soft in the middle, probably take about five minutes to cook, so it's lovely. So I'll leave that, now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to do like a veg dish here, and I'll be down to the market with uh, Wilco, and we've got some nice fennel. And I think we probably need about one and a half for this, so we'll save that for a salad or something. So what I want to do with this is I've got this fennel, yeah, and not a lot of people know what to do with it. You can have it raw in salads, finely sliced, you can mash it, you can roast it, you can grill it even on the barbie. But what I want to do is just slowly fry it, and when you slowly fry it, it goes really, really sweet and sort of aniseedy, right? What I want to do is, that essentially is the stalk, and it's a bit stringier. But there's nothing wrong with it, brilliant flavour. So I just finely slice that so it cooks quicker than everything else, and just cut in the half here, and I just finely slice it. Now, to be honest, you can, you can slice it any way you like. I just do it because I like to get a nice slice like that. But you can do it, you know, the fact, if it's all over the place, it really does not matter, right? Now, what I need is a couple of cloves of garlic. Just pull those off. Just get rid of the old skins. All right. So just get rid of the old paper. So just finely slice this garlic. And then take the old board over here and our olive oil. Right, so you need a good lug of olive oil. And then I'm going to sprinkle in my garlic. And then I'm going to put my fennel the slightly tougher stuff on top of that, so it gets cooked first. And then just sprinkle this over it, yeah? I'll just leave it for a couple of minutes while it does that. And a nice pinch of salt at this stage. All right? And I'll just put the old lid on. Right, so next one, I want to make this fantastic sauce that not many people know about, and my old boss used to do it, and it is honestly the most amazing sauce and like most of us just know sauces as kind of being like smooth, creamy things you chuck over a bit of veg or a bit of meat and that's it. But this is something really like, you know, will take you back to Italy, you know what I mean, really rustic. So what I need is olives, yeah? And I need them to be stoned. I probably need about half of these, Wilco. Is that all right? Yeah, that'd be fine. All right. So basically, I'll give you half of these. Yeah, all right. What you got to do, me old mate, get a, like, something like a cup, yeah? And I buy the olives with the stone in, yeah? You might think, oh, what a palaver, I'll have an olive stone. Olive stone is fine. They taste more than three times better. And if you put it on a board or anything, just get something blunt and just hit it like that, right? And you can take the pip out, put the pip in there, and you've got a lovely squashed olive that looks so natural as opposed to that silly little round circle with a cross on the end. And get kids to do it, you know, just sort of get them excited and say, you know, do that and make sure you put the pip in here and like, Next thing you know, you've got a whole load of pipped olives. Slave labour, mate. Yeah, Wilk. OK, mate. Thank you. Cheers, bro. Right, so for this sauce, yeah, all I need is I've got a couple of handfuls of good olives, yeah? Finely slice some garlic. And then I want to get my little pan. I want a good lug. About four tablespoons of olive oil. Right. And then I want to put my old garlic in here. And then I want some anchovies. So I want about four fillets of anchovies. Now, I'm not using anchovies because uh, I, like, I don't actually like anchovies, but if you use them with a bit of, like, nonce about you, right, just use them as a flavour enhancer, yeah? And they will melt in that sauce. You won't even know they're there, and it will taste so, so good. So I'm just going to whack that on the low heat for a couple of minutes. 
till it starts sort of uh, just softening up the garlic. Yeah, but you don't want the garlic to go, you know, have any colour. All right, let's have a look over here. Now, we've got a nice little bit of colour here. All right, and I've turned the heat right down now, so you shouldn't get much more colour than that. But what's happening now is the fennel's going really, really sweet. So whatever you put it, you know, whether it's beans, or you turn it into a soup, or you just serve it like that with a little bit of cream, with a chicken breast, or, or whatever. We're going to use chard, yeah? But, like, it's going to taste lovely. Not quite there yet. So, what I've got is I've got my chard, yeah? And chard is kind of a bit like spinach, but a little bit more robust and a little bit more good looking, you know? So I've got green and red chard here, and all I do is just push it to one side, and like, obviously the leaf is going to cook quicker than the stalk. So all I do really quickly is just run my knife down the stalk like that. So, just do that. It takes about two minutes, but it's well worth it. Or, what you could do, is just get a whole load of the stalks up like this, right? And then just sort of finely chop them. Basically, you don't want to waste the stalk because it's nice and good for you, but at the same time, you want it to cook at the same time as the leaves, you know? Right, and then with these lovely green ones, yeah, just rip off the nice green stuff, yeah? And with the white stuff, again, finely slice it. And that'll be nice. Let's get them all on the board. Right, so I'm going to go and put these chard in. Superb. Now, this looks like a lot of chard, yeah? But the thing is, it's going to wilt. So, give these fennel a nice little stir. It smells fantastic. Just get the greens, push them in there. Really push them in there. And your stalks. When I put these greens in, Another good pinch of salt, because they'll need it. Lid goes on top. Happy days. Right, so let's just get the old uh, sauce. Right, so there you go. Wilkes, you got these olives, mate? One more. And we're done. Lovely, good job. Sweet, so what I'm going to do is get a nice handful of olives, put them in there, all right, nice and chunky styly. And then what I'm going to do is get some of these ones, chop them up, just for a little bit of texture. Right, so just get that into there. Right, and then what we can do is you can kind of flavour it again in another way. I'm just going to use a little bit of fresh parsley. Right, and I'm just rip that. A little bit of stalk's nice. It's just really nice and rustic, real sort of Italian cooking, yeah? And then what I do is just get a little bit of cream. Just use a little bit of a single cream. And what happens is you just need like a couple of tablespoons like that, yeah? And what happens is if you give it a little shake, and we can just keep it warm from now onwards, yeah? And look at that. Now, it looks like it's split, but remember, it's not split with horrible fat. It's split with really, really tasty extra virgin olive oil. So, and it tastes amazing. So, I want to keep that warm at the back of the kind of hobs. And uh, check the old greens. Look at that. Fantastic. Beautiful colours. Smells gorgeous. This will be about, like, three more minutes. Then I'm just going to push it to the back and reheat it later for dinner. And this can go in the fridge. I'll just whack that in the oven, about 250, right at the top so the skin goes nice and crispy. Cook it for about five minutes. Right, so I'm going to make a really sexy risotto for starters, yeah? And like, risotto can be really dry and horrible and boring, or it can be really gorgeous and creamy and oozy, and that's what we want to do today, a real sexy one. So, uh, Wilkes, yeah, mate. are you up for about 18 minutes? 18 minutes is great, upstairs and we drink, so everything's cool, thank Sweet, you. Sweet, there's me old mate. And uh, basically, risottos take about 18 minutes to cook, yeah? Which is all right, really, when you think about it, because you can get it going, and you just have to... You don't have to sit there staring at it all the time, but just, you know, I'm going to have a nice glass of wine, have a little gossip, you know, get the old thing on the go. So, I mean, the, the fantastic thing about risottos, yeah, is that you have a basic risotto that can go absolutely any flavour you like, right? The, the flavour I'm doing, I'm going to do three cheeses. I'm going to do pecorino, parmesan and goat's cheese, right? Really, really tasty. And I'm just going to kind of like tear up at the last minute a little bit of really thinly sliced prosciutto, a little bit of lemon thyme. Superb, mate. Best flavour in the world. So what I want to do is just take the ends off these two little onions and you can use shallots or a couple of small onions. So I just peel the old boys. And I've got, I've had to swap pans with my veg. I need this one for risotto, really, which is perfect. You need kind of pans that are like slightly high-sided. So let's get the old skin off. Cool. Right, so what we need to do, and you can do this in a fruit processor if you like, is just uh, finely chop the onion. And sometimes in Italy when they do it, they even do it in a mincer. 
and uh, just mince the garlic and the celery and the onion. But we're just doing onion and garlic. Lovely. Oh, no, I'm going to start crying now. It's got me. Ah. Oh, me old sinuses. Right, so basically, when you've got it nice and chopped up, you want a nice lug of olive oil, right? And a little knob of butter, just a little one. And uh, get your onion in there. And we just need a little bit of chopped garlic as well. So we need about two cloves of garlic. Right, so just finely chop that. Lovely. Right, when we've done that, just get that into the pan. Get that on the old gas. Right, so just put that on a sort of medium heat. Cool. Now, basically, what I'm going to do is just let the old uh, onions and garlic fry off nice and soft for about a couple of minutes, yeah? But then I'm going to think about adding this rice. Um, and this is a cannaroli rice. It's Italian sort of um, risotto rice, which is really short, plump and sort of full of starch. And the whole thing is, is like there's so much starch in it that you've really got to kind of get it out and into the risotto, so it's really kind of like creamy and oozy, and that's, that's what's good about risotto, really. So that does involve a little bit of like stirring, like a little bit like massaging, do you know what I mean? You've got to massage the starch out. So I think like per person, you normally add about sort of 75 grams to 100 grams per person, yeah, of rice. But it depends what sort of size portion you want, really. That looks nice. No colour, just nice and soft. I'm going to add about just under half a pack. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right? Beautiful. And give it a good little stir. And you can see the first thing that that rice does is like suck up all that fantastic sort of buttery, oniony, garlicky goodness, yeah? And then we've got a choice here. We can just leave it for a couple of minutes and like add stock. Or I want to put a little bit of vermouth in it. And you don't have to use vermouth. You could use white wine, it's fine. But vermouth is really good because it's quite sweet. Get a bit of the old noily and uh, get it in there. So what we have to look for now in the rice is that it's going slightly translucent. You can see at the side it's going a little bit see-through. So, a little glass of noily prat. And the whole idea of that is that basically all the alcohol gets cooked out yeah, and you're just left with all that really fragrant sort of sweet stuff. So just give it a good old stir. Fantastic. And when you can't smell alcohol anymore, it's about 30 seconds, you know that it's going to be gagging for some nice stock. And basically, a risotto is as good as the stock that you put in it. I mean, like, if you haven't got time, please do use a stock cube, and it'll be fine for dinner. But like, if you want to show off, you've got mates coming around, you've got the bubbly going, you know, you want a bit of nice tucker, make a little bit of homemade stock. Don't, no palaver, just the remains of a nice roast chicken, a little bit of veg, is fine. So. I can't smell the alcohol anymore, so I'm just going to add a nice ladle of stock. And you want it to be kind of just like loose all the time. And when it gets, starts getting thick, just add a little bit more stock. And basically, you don't want to cook it too fast. Cook it on a medium heat for about 16 minutes like this, adding a ladle of stock every now and again. Um, and you'll see the rice getting bigger and bigger as you add the stock. So you just keep your eyes peeled. I wouldn't leave it, but then again, you don't have to sit there staring at it all the time. Right, she's home. So there we go. Cheers, everyone. Right, I think we're there now. We've been adding stock for about 15 minutes. Right, you need the rice to be soft, but have a little bit of a bite. And if it feels like you need a drink of water afterwards, then it's not cooked enough. So, right, a little bit more stock. Right, so just get the old pan over here. Now this rice is cooked, I'm going to add a nice knob of butter. Get that in there. And we've taken it off the heat now, and that's the important bit. You don't want, while we add butter and cheese, don't, you don't want to be cooking it anymore. And a good handful of the pecorino and parmesan. OK? And then the goat's cheese, I'm going to crumble over the top later. Right. So the idea here is just to beat this all together. So let's have a little taste. Mmm. That needs... A little bit more cheese, right? And it also needs a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. 
Right, so that's basically the risotto done, yeah? Will, okay, are you ready, mate? Yeah, I'm ready. Nice one. Right, now what I'm going to do is probably right, the most important part when you've actually cooked a good risotto, and that's put the lid on and forget about it for about two minutes, yeah? And what happens then is in all the starch, it just kind of relaxes and it just goes really oozy and lovely. Um, so I've got the goat's cheese that I'm going to crumble over the top, which is the third cheese. I've got my prosciutto, which I'm just going to tear up and put over the top. And that's it, mate. Have a little clean down and let's get tucking in. Well, we've had a lovely three days, seen some lovely people. And you know what? It really doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, old or young. We can all eat really pucker tucker, do you know what I mean? And if I was to give you any advice, I'd say, you know, if you're having dinner party or friends around, keep it simple, stick to what you're good at, and have a little tickle. Check out what's down the market, see what's in season, what's good. And, uh, you know, stick to the box of tricks. Keep it stocked up. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just food. So don't take it too seriously. And if I was Jerry Springer, I'd say, um, take care of yourself. Good luck, happy cooking, and uh, get stuck in.